Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Scholes. This week, we're in the United States because it's 4th of July week here, and I think it's important for us to take a look and see what our collective folklore has to say about who we are and potentially how we got here. Today's story is Thunderberg. Thunderberg, Thunder Mountain, at the southern gate of the Hudson Highlands, is a wooded eminence, chiefly populated by a crew of imps of stout circumference, whose leader, the Heer, is a bulbous goblin clad in the dress worn by Dutch colonists two centuries ago, and carrying a speaking trumpet through which he bawls his orders for the blowing of winds and the touching off of lightnings. These orders are given in low Dutch, and are put into execution by the imps aforesaid, who troop into the air and tumble about in the mist, sometimes smiting the flag or topsail of a ship to ribbons, or laying the vessel over before the wind, until she is in peril of going on beam ends. At one time, a sloop passing the Dunderberg had nearly foundered when the crew discovered the sugar-loaf hat of the Heer at the masthead. None dared to climb for it, and it was not until she had driven past Pulipal's Island, the limit of the Heer's jurisdiction, that she righted. And as she did so, the little hat spun into the air like a top, creating a vortex that drew up the storm clouds and the sloop kept her way prosperously for the rest of the voyage. The captain had nailed a horseshoe to the mast. The hat rogue of the Devil's Bridge in Switzerland must be a relative of this gamesome sprite, for his mischief is usually of a harmless sort. But to be on the safe side, the Dutchmen who plied along the river lowered their peaks in homage to the keeper of the mountain, and for years this was a common practice. Mariners who paid this courtesy to the heer of the Dunderberg were never molested by his imps, though Skipper Elstriker, of Fishgill, for all he had a parson on board, was once beset by a heavy squall, and the goblin came out of the mist and sat astraddle of his bowspirit, seeming to guide his schooner straight toward the rocks. The dominie chanted the song of St. Nicholas, and the goblin, unable to endure either its spiritual potency or the worthy parson's singing, shot upward like a ball and rode off on the gale, carrying with him the nightcap of the parson's wife, which he hung on the weathercock of Espus steeple, forty miles away. And that was Thunderberg. Story captured for us by Charles Skinner. And that story was brought in 1896. So, well past the revolution, but still showing a bit of folklore in the United States. And we also see a bit of the identification of this here, the goblin, clad in dress worn by Dutch colonists two centuries before, so the original Dutch colonists of New York. This is Dan Schulz for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can also follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com, where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. As always, thank you so much for listening.